Welcome App State alumni to the Special Collections Research Center located on the fourth floor of Belk Library and Information Commons. My name is Kim Sims. I'm the coordinator of Special Collections and the University Archivist. What is the University Archives, you may be asking? Well, it's the official repository for the university's records. But we have so much more than that. It's also scrapbooks, it's photographs, it's oral histories, publications, and artifacts related to the history of Appalachian State University. Today I'm going to showcase several artifacts which represent the history of Appalachian State University. So let's get started. Some of you are probably aware that the first name of Appalachian State University was Watauga Academy. The second name, however, was the Appalachian Training School. And this artifact is very important in the history of the Appalachian Training School name because on this table in 1903, B.B. Doherty drew up a bill to present to General Assembly in Raleigh to ask for a state-supported school here in Boone to support Western North Carolina students as well as training teachers to go out and teach in North Carolina. This table was purchased in 1974 by Gordon Winkler and donated to the university. It is housed here in special collections and whenever our building is open to the public, you're welcome to come see it. So every fall when we celebrate Founders Day, we focus a lot on Dee Dee and B.B. Doherty and Lily Shull Doherty. But one of the unsung heroes of the founding of Appalachian State University is Daniel Baker Doherty, who is the daddy to Dee Dee and B.B. This item is the earliest documentation we have um, noting you know, how they needed a, a school here in Boone. Um, so this letter was written by Daniel Baker Doherty to his son, Dee Dee Doherty, and it's dated April the 10th 1899. Now most of the letter is pretty general, but of, of note um, to the history of Appalachian State is this one statement which says, I wrote you some time ago about the demands and the desires of Watauga people about you and B, meaning BB, building up a school you have not answered. Approximately two weeks later, B.B. Doherty, who was in Chapel Hill, wrote a response to D.D. Doherty, who was living in Butler, Tennessee at the time, noting that their father had contacted him again about starting a school. And his only real concern was that Boone may not be big enough for the two of them to start a school. But we know ultimately they did because by the end of the year, Watauga Academy had been founded. One of Appalachian State University's earlier names was the Appalachian State Normal School. It was only the normal school for a short period of time, so we don't have a lot in the university archives reflective of that time period. However, this particular item is from the, the normal school, and it is the diploma for Jesse Louise Urey, who graduated from the normal school in 1929. Something interesting to note is Jesse was the sister of W.L. Urey, who was the longtime head librarian at Appalachian State, and for whom the Appalachian Collection is named. So the literary societies existed at Appalachian State University pretty much from the beginning. Our earliest documentation shows evidence that there were three literary societies as early as 1905, one of which was the Watauga Literary Society. This particular item is indicative of that society and it is a membership coin. The side you're seeing here is the reverse side of the coin. You'll see it has WLS engraved as well as Howard Vernon Gregg's name and the place he was from, Collettesville, uh, North Carolina, and that he is a member uh, of Boone, North Carolina's Watauga Literary Society. On the obverse of the coin is a Native American man's profile with the headdress. So one of the most random artifacts I've come across here at Appalachian State in the University Archives are the numbers you see on the table. They are from one of the faculty houses and they came from the Herman Eggers papers. And Herman was a longtime registrar. And when he and his wife first um, moved to Boone, they lived in one of the faculty houses, obviously 709 Faculty Street. And what is meaningful is that obviously it meant something to him and his wife that when that house was demolished, they salvaged the, uh, the street numbers. So this is a copy of a photograph from the Mary Gooch photograph collection that shows the faculty houses as they once looked around Faculty Street. So this is one of my favorite artifacts from the university archives because it's really unusual. It is a milk glass souvenir cup from the Appalachian Training School. 
you've got this beautiful fancy souvenir available at a time when this wasn't the norm um, based on my experiences Stuff like souvenirs, t-shirts, caps, didn't come along till much later in the 20th century. And so for a small mountain town school to have such a, a beautiful decorative souvenir available is, is in, a, in and of itself amazing. And I think we're really lucky to have it. So it's a pretty substantial souvenir, especially for the time period. So not only do you have this beautiful milk glass, you have the embellishment at the bottom, and then on the front you can see embossed where it says Souvenir of Appalachian Training School, Boone, North Carolina. Additionally, you've got gilding around the rim and then also between the decorative points of the cup, which is pretty amazing and it's, it's a really beautiful piece. So to demonstrate that we're not just concerned with the distant past when it comes to our collecting, this is the newest acquisition we have in the university archives. It's a football signed by the 2007 national championship team. You know the one, the one that beat Michigan? So this is a program from the 1968 commencement ceremonies, which was the first commencement after the university officially became Appalachian State University. And I have an ulterior motive for highlighting it with you today because I need commencement programs for the university archives. We have a very small collection of commencement programs and they are a very, very valuable resource for genealogists, for students, for me. And I am making this plea now to any alumni out there, please, if you are willing to part with your commencement program, I would be happy to take it. I will also accept a scan or a Xerox copy. It would just be great to grow this collection that we can share with our students and our faculty and our outside researchers. This is one of my favorite pieces in the university archives. It is a pennant from the Mary Elizabeth Hackney collection. And Mary Elizabeth, who went by Lib, graduated from the Appalachian State Teachers College in 1934. And we have pennants, a lot of pennants in the university archives, a lot of schools do, but they're always made of felt. And this is unique because it's made of leather and it's hand painted. And it's really one of the most beautiful uh, pennants I have ever seen. And, um, it even has the original dowel rod that uh, she used to presumably wave the pennant. But a particular note here is not just the seal and the word Appalachian. What I really appreciate is that she had her name also um, inscribed on the pennant as well as Lip Hackney. Um, and it's a really awesome representation of women at Appalachian State and a social custom that they engaged in. So I don't really know much about this piece other that it's pretty indicative, I think, of the 70s. And from what I've seen in the Appalachian student newspaper, those of you here in the 70s had a pretty good time. Um, this print, it says here on the map that it was commissioned by Lewis Gaston. And that's about all I know. And Lewis Gaston was the news bureau director um, for a period of time until his untimely passing in 1973. So I don't know, I, I can assume that he commissioned a summer school um, art student to do this print, but um, anyone here at App State, especially in the 70s, would likely recognize a lot of the spots on the print. Um, and some even today, it's got Tweetsie, you know, it's got the different hiking mountains, Grandfather Mountain, Bass Lake, and then it's a pretty awesome piece and uh, we're happy to have it. Well, I hope you all enjoyed seeing several artifacts uh, from the university archives. It's important that the narrative of the students and the alumni are present in the university's records. It's not just about the administration records. They're important, yes, but so is your story. And I hope you got to see a little bit of that represented in the items that I pulled for you. And also to know that this is your archives. This is your story. And you are welcome to visit us whenever the building is open to the public. And we have open hours post Posted on our website, which is collections.library.appstate.edu. You can also see the different publications we have online, like the yearbooks and the student newspaper. We also have historical photographs and audiovisual materials, such as oral histories, available on our digital collections page. Thanks for watching.